Today's news video is dedicated to the memory of Karim Ahmed. More about him in the video. Greetings Rommies and welcome to Rum Rum, where you'll always find the joy of sim racing and to a regular news roundup, our weekly sim racing news. Welcome to the channel, my name is Serta and I will be your host for this video. Welcome to the last news video of the month. I'm taking a small break next week in which we expect to at last get the 1.5 version of Automobilista 2 out, which in theory is ready already, but was stopped because of the vanity of one person. Anyway, Rennsport published a series of videos with the panels that took place in the last summit and to save you the time, there's not much information there we didn't already know about. The panels are all quite surface level. Makes me even happier I did not spend the upwards of 250 euro to go to the summit as it would have been a bad investment of my money and time. And SnowRunner Season 10 started also this week. The surprise hit we never knew we needed is running on all pistons in its third year of existence. Will it be the last? The future will tell. And F123, not even two months after being released, is now reduced by 40%. Well, at least the Champions Edition is, which is now cheaper than the normal edition at a whopping 54 euro USD. Still more than I'm willing to even consider. Seems we were not the only ones doubting the quality of the game. See the link up there. Some of us may not have known Karim Ahmed by name, but many of us are aware of his work. You see, Karim was instrumental in setting up and moving forward Track Titan, a system that helps you become a better sim racer. It analyzes your driving style and tells you where you are leaving those important hundreds of a second on the track by comparing your telemetry to a vast curated database of drivers and their racing lines, gears and speed. Without Kareem, Track Titan's code would never have gotten as comprehensive or efficient and structure as it is today and we are assured by those who knew him, his energy and support were instrumental in having Track Titan walk, run and soar. It's always upsetting to bring you news of a life lost. It's even sadder when they are genuinely a good person. Kareem and his girlfriend Chastin were reported as passing in a road traffic accident. As much as we are probably preaching to the choir, road safety isn't just looking after your own safety, but of everyone else around you. Kareem's family have set up a GoFundMe to support the cost of the funeral. You'll find the link in our description. And in the words of the Track Titan team, thanks for switching off the engine for a minute today. Rest in power, Kareem. Thank you for Track Titan. We'll see each other on the podium at the end of our stints. Seemingly feeling the heat from cheaper Chinese companies, either imitations or innovations, Fanatec has dropped the price of their CSL DD base to 200 euro USD. If you buy any Fanatec rim and pedals together with the base, a kind of make your own discounted bundle situation. This isn't the full price, just a 150 euro USD discount on what you may have paid before. If we read this price correctly, this applies also to existing bundles, of which Fanatec offers many on their site. What do you think? Good? Bad idea? Is this potentially a response to the initial feedback of the Camus LP8? Is it starting a dangerous downward price loop they won't survive or getting more people attracted to sim racing? Or both? Let us know in the comments. It's not too long ago that we brought you news of the SCS team visiting the Wilton trailer factory and now they're releasing a DLC pack specifically for them. More precisely, six trailer types with further customizations building off them. The top level variations are a high volume dumper, a steel dumper, an aluminium dumper, a curtain cider, a drop side and a dry van. These come with the usual litany of personalizations, customizations and upgrades. Don't forget the tires that we're used to from SCS, so grab the pack and dive into even more things to drag around the continent. 
The DLC is already available on Steam for 4 Euro USD. If you missed the last race of the ASRC's Russell Cup using their very own Clio Cup Car mod, you not only missed great races as always, but the participation of this year's Le Mans 24 hour winner in the LMP2 class, Albert Costa. Going by Costa Balboa in the sim, Albert made a fantastic first, fifth, fifth position combination over the three races. A resplendent display for his first foray into these highly specialized machines. As he's currently second in the WC LMP2 class with his teammates Fabio Scherer and Jakob Schmielowski, we don't expect him to become a regular. But another real life racing driver showing excellent talent and driving standards as well as fantastic sportsmanship in an unfamiliar machinery among a highly competitive championship. Now, we can't promise you his presence or anybody else's in our next broadcasts, we wish, but we can promise you're going to see more racing live on our channel. Not only do we have the return of the exhilarating Automobilista 2 Community Cup starting once more later this summer, in about a month's time, but the ASRC is already working on another open wheel series and an as yet undisclosed tin top series. I can only tell you one thing, if you listen to our last podcast, see the link up there, you'll know why the tin top series is going to make Serta very happy. Live racing, excellent sportsmanship and driving, and great race commentary. What else do you want? We really are sharing the joy of sim racing. If you would like to help us bring you better product reviews and sim racing news in the future, you can do so by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash vrumvrum. Amongst other perks, becoming a patron will fix your name for posterity like this, but you'll also be able to participate in our podcast recording, get to know what we're planning and what we're doing, and we'll be able to take part in our decisions. So a big thank you to our patrons and members. If you come here often, please consider subscribing. Raceroom has brought their previously announced Porsche pack to the sim on Thursday. Three Porsches for 10 euro USD. And while they were at it, KW Studios also updated the sim and they somehow sneaked the McLaren 720S GT3 into the GTR class, available for 6 euro USD, including 12 liveries. What is it with studios treating McLaren like some kind of middle child that doesn't warrant an announcement? First Kunos released the Evo with a minor patch, and now KW doesn't even do that. What is an important change is the addition of longitudinal forces to the tyre contact patch, the small part of any race car that touches the tarmac. This is a significant change to the sim and surely requires no small amount of coding to achieve. A lot of R3E drivers are going to find themselves needing to move their brake bias forward as well as having to readjust their braking curves as well as potentially looking at the force feedback settings under braking. Don't sleep on this update, this has the potential to be game changing for the KW owned sim. Traction control simulation has also somehow been improved, no details given here. Included in the notes is the ability to define in the car setup how much the tyres can slip before the TC sets in. Default setups will also be updated in what they call soon TM, and we thought we were the only ones doing that joke. They've also improved ABS, and part of that improvement was adding a sound effect for it so you can get that direct feedback that you're losing brake performance. Remember, ABS is a tool not to be leaned on. Tons of tweaks were made to different vehicles. The Audi R8 LMS GT3 Evo, as well as the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo, got their aerodynamic behavior corrected. The DTM 2020 German Nationals, GTEs, GT2s, P1s, and P2s got some adjustments of their differential. The Formula Race Room 2 and Formula Race Room X17 now consume more fuel, so be careful with your race strategies, they may be a couple of laps short. Formula Race Room 90 and Formula Race Room US got changes in the cooling of the brakes. The developers now expect the brakes to stay longer at the optimal temperatures. These two classes also got a new underbody slash diffuser code, increased steering forces, better base setups, and also improved differential settings. In Group C, the Porsche 962 has gotten a longer default fifth gear, while in Group 2, the Volkswagen Scirocco has received an update to the physics for the AI, plus other smaller changes in vehicles here and there. As always, the link in the description brings you to their detailed update list. Some of the tracks also got updates, like Most and TT Assen, 
which were brought up to date towards the 2023 specs, the Red Bullring, where the green tarmac is now purple like in real life, and Silverstone, which got a resurface and therefore now has better grip. 